Welcome back to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I'm Lionel McClintock. I'm in Toronto, Canada, and we have with us, introduce yourself. Robert, and just outside Nashville, Tennessee. Where it's probably a little nicer than it is in Toronto right now. It's been raining. We actually had a beautiful straight. day today. I Sunny, warm, <laughs> clear skies, but we're supposed to get some storms tonight, so it's going to change tomorrow. Yeah, well, you know what, though? Here's the thing. For the first time since 2017, 2018, we might finally be able to get back our real friendly rivalry, albeit only if both of our hockey teams can make it to the <laughs> second round. I think they would play each other in the second round if that happened, right? That's correct, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, that would be, that would be the uh, that would be the uh, div the conference final, and then going into the division final, and then Stanley Cup, right? Uh, we should mention our topics for today are basically going to be about playoffs because you know what I gotta say they're they're here but they're technically around the corner yet. Uh, as an example, there are some teams still playing. The Winnipeg Jets have one game to play. Uh, they've locked up a playoff spot, but not the actual exact spot. They could finish as low as seventh, possibly eighth. I'm not sure if somebody can pass them or not. Uh, or they could finish as high as fourth. If they win tonight, they actually will finish fourth. Um, because they'll have the same amount of points as the Florida Panthers, but they would have the advantage based on the ROW, which I can't remember exactly what that means, but it has something to do with wins, including overtime, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah something like uh, that. And they have an advantage of a few games of that. So even if they win, you know, uh, whether it's overtime or not, they have the advantage there. Um, yeah. so Our stuff was all it. messed up. And it can, because it's like, at first we thought we could lose the number one wild card to um the golden knights but then no we chance. realized if the golden knights win out they would actually displace the kings in the first or excuse me in the last actual playoff exactly. spot which would put yeah. the kings under its and then we have the tiebreaker against the kings and more points so our number one playoff wild card spot right. was locked up anyway so yeah exactly but, like i said that's what that's what, what exactly what i was i was gonna say tweeted to you but i don't even use i'm sorry x what's wrong with my camera are you seeing that too yeah it's, it's uh oh, oh yeah. there it goes okay i think it's that <laughs> notification issue again uh, oh. <laughs> i gotta find a way to turn that off it's really gonna get on my nerves it's gonna get on a lot of people's nerves thing is is i generally clear the notifications because if it's only one or two it's not a big deal but we, we, that's that's another discussion. We could bring that up another time. Yeah. Why are notifications <laughs> yeah, no. have to be a huge problem? Android does it so much better than iOS. Guess what? iOS doesn't hound you with your notifications if you don't want them to. So let's let's you know. Anyway, we're not going there. Let's, but it's let's fine get now. back into some nice NHL stuff. Uh, I'm of course a little anxious. As a matter of fact, on my phone right now, what I should do is actually pin the score. Because uh, hopefully they're not already losing. Because they're sitting a lot. Oh, good God, it's one one. I shouldn't have opened my mouth. <laughs> All right, my score is pinned for that. Uh, they're playing the Vancouver Canucks. If the Canucks win, they leapfrog back over the Jets. Jets will finish uh, somewhere around seventh overall in the league, which is not bad. It's good, but it also means they have um, only one game of. Oh, sorry, no, they won't have home ice advantage at all. Uh, the Canucks will have it, and depending on who wins beyond the first round, they may never have home ice advantage. If they beat them, they finish fourth, and they could theoretically get home ice advantage in every series, depending on who beats who before the Jets get there. That's a big Yeah, issue, I don't know who um, between the Preds and the Jets would... I mean, you're a higher standing, but... Yeah, I don't know. Well, well, you that mean that who would win out. if they played each other? No, who would have home ice advantage? Oh, no, two? no, the, the Jets, of course, because they, they, they're higher in the standings, period. There's no tying. The tiebreakers only count if the points are actually tied. Uh, it, it otherwise automatically goes to points in, in the position. The Jets are, are, are definitely ahead, so they would, they would have home ice. Um, it would be the exact reverse 
of 2017, 2018, uh, where you had the uh, advantage. Not that did you Which that. maybe that Sorry. plays to our advantage because we've <laughs> been a better fired. road team this year than we were last year. So, Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, as a matter yeah. of fact, if you look at the Preds' uh, uh, home record, it's almost identical to the Winnipeg Jets' home record, and they're one of the best in the league. Like I said, they, they're one win away from finishing fourth overall, and if they do do that, they will actually finish only four points out of first place overall. That's right. where they finish. And if I remember correctly, in 2017, 2018, they were three points out of first place overall behind the Predators. And that was at second. So fourth or second, three or four points out of first place overall at the end of the season, um, that's something, that's nothing to sneeze at. That's, that's pretty good. And the Predators really only had their struggles at home. Although you have to admit, it was a lot less in the last, I'd say, 10 or so home games. They played a lot better. I think they won about seven of those, didn't they? They, they uh, I don't know the exact number, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, ever since that complete ass whooping we took against Dallas, they <laughs> they they did turn things around. Um, yeah, and their so, numbers their numbers from February uh, to the end of the season were pretty notable, but they were very inconsistent. And you have to have a consistency in the playoffs. You can't be dropping two three games right. and then come back and start winning again. You got to have some consistency, and that's that's where my uh, doubt lies yeah by the way i do have to say something i realized i said something really ridiculously dumb it's the avalanche that, that the jets are playing in the first round not not the canucks you guys are the ones playing the canucks if i'm not mistaken yes uh yeah right um so I, let's actually talk about uh realistically we can go with our opinions on what we what we think but let's talk about um the players what they have uh on their team who they have on their team their goaltending their defensive structure, power plays, and whatnot, and 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 break down who we think w- should win the series between the Preds and the uh, uh, the uh, I just said it too Canucks, uh, and and why? So you're 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 the Predators fan. You're the one in the Nashville area. So we'll start with you, and then I'll tell you what I think about um, some of those things. Okay, so. Everyone talks about how we lost against the Canucks all three games this year. But all three games this year were played prior to that February turnaround when we were actually playing really crappy hockey. In addition to that, Demko is just coming back from, uh, is it a hamstring or groin injury or something? I'm not sure. And he played really well. He did like 38 of 40 saves the last game they played. Excuse me. But is he long term? Is and he doesn't have the playoff experience like Saros has. Right. Uh, in, in the goalie department, to me, it's a no brainer. We we have the better goalie, and we have the more experienced goalie, et cetera, et cetera. But he's a good goalie, so it doesn't mean. I mean, he could be standing on his head for four games, and it'd be a sweep. You know? Right. So the, who who knows? But I feel personally, we better matched in this round with Vancouver than we do at Dallas. Dallas I, is a I think tough, almost anybody matches team. better with Vancouver than they do with Dallas, to be <laughs> yeah. honest with you. They're I, tough. They I'm always a, play I'm as happy tough. the Jets aren't playing them in the first round. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm we're crossing our fingers that the Vegas can pull off a series win. So either you or I should say the Jets or the Preds would face Vegas in round two. If one of us gets eliminated. Right, right. Um, in all honesty, I don't want to see the Jets have to go up against the Vegas again. They they have a um, some kind of a stingy form of a defense that oh, yeah. has a, a way of being able to <clears throat> stifle teams in the playoffs. And they've done it three out of the last five years where they've completely stifled other teams. And the only teams that were able to beat them were the teams that either went on to win the Stanley Cup or went on to go to the Stanley Cup and at least... You do have a really good shot. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe Stone is going to be back. And we'll of course, Marchessault has been hot. So I mean, right. Stone yeah. has been you know before he got hurt. I mean, he was our lead you know guy in many categories. But right. That yeah. being said, you know, um, and there's some numbers with Forsberg that I just 
because he's he's done it so quietly this year hasn't been so dramatic it kind of got snuck under the table let, let me let me cut you off for one for just one second i i accidentally saw his stats the other day because it was something else that somebody was talking about in an article and they flashed up on or not an article in a video and they flashed up the numbers of uh several players for whatever reason uh, as to how long they've been around and what they've done over the last x amount of seasons and what they did this season and i saw his for this season i was like huh what why are the league not why are broadcasters not talking about this guy i mean it's he's playing yeah. right now as if he were 30 or 30 as if he were 22 years old anyways continue please no yeah <laughs> 48 goals which yeah. is a franchise record which the previous record was 43 that Duchesne did that same year. He did 42. He was only one behind Duchesne that year. So he did 48 goals, but here's the, here's the metric to me that means the most. I mean, obviously goals are huge, but he's had like almost 900 shot attempts. He didn't even have half that last year. That's just one season. Yeah, so wow. and he didn't so, even have that. He was like three hundred and eighty last year, and he's done almost nine hundred you know shot attempts this year. You, you got to make me actually look up Mark Shifley now because he's always had really high shot attempts, um, not league record shot attempts, but high nonetheless. Even if he doesn't score for four games in a row, he usually has as many or more shots as most people, with the exception of when you have games like Kyle Connor getting like nine. Yeah. Shot attempts, but he and then of course three times he does that. But you have Roman he, Yossi, who's been his stellar performance. I mean, he's in the Norris Trophy talk. I don't, I don't know if he's going to actually get that nomination, but um, he deserves it. Uh, he's got, you know, like top three, top five numbers in almost every category for defensemen. He's leading defensemen in goals scored, and I mean, you know, it's just typical Roman Yossi kind of stuff. He's exciting. I love watching him play. <laughs> okay, let's, let's see here. Um, oh, if it lets me spell his name properly, Mark, <laughs> please continue with your stat while I look this up. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that was really kind of yeah. The only other the only other player that's really kind of come on to scene that's a new player is Gus Nyquist. I love Nyquist. I mean, we've had some really good additions. Obviously, uh, McDonough. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, uh, O'Reilly and Nyquist we got just this year. Obviously, McDonough was on our team last year, but right. um, Nyquist has like twenty-two goals, I think. I mean, he's come on fire. I mean, this is like he's having he's having a career year, and he's in his thirties. Well, your your team right now, well, not right now. The season's over. Uh, they're going into the playoffs now, but. Uh, um, for most of the year, but especially in the second half for the most part, um, they've been consistently uh, slightly better than middle of the pack in goal scoring as a team, um, which a lot of people might think, well, well, it's mediocre, so what? You know, slightly better than the middle of the pack. Um, keeping in mind that slightly better than the middle of the pack, there's about a 15-goal differential from Team 6 to Team 25. You know, and, and how many goals teams are scoring? And, and, and I mean, the Jets are way down the list, and and they've always been a team. Like from the beginning of the season, they are a team that you know can hurt you in the goal department, and yet they're they're nowhere near scoring prowess of the Canucks, uh, the Maple Leafs, uh, the Avalanche, or even the Predators for that yeah. matter. So. so Here's a stat from so from February 17th to the end of the season, this is our last game. Um, and that was the start of that 18 game point streak, which again was another franchise record. But the Predators had the second most wins of 20, the second highest point count of 43. This is the entire NHL. And we outscored opponents 106 to 71, which is the second highest differential in the league, and scored the third most goals per game at 3.79, while allowing the fourth fewest at 2.54. So, yeah. again, when you look at those numbers there, the prior to February, when we were literally like 
I don't know, six points out of the bottom playoff contention. Right. We're a totally different team than what the Canucks faced. So yeah. I feel like we pair pretty good. Now, do you and we have, have the stats in front of you for how well the team did in its last 20 games and last 15 games? Now, I say no, this I because I last 10 games those. doesn't always mean as much. Um, the reason yeah. I bring that up is because regardless of how t- well your team has played, if they've stayed within a certain level approximately, like they've been basically middle of the pack, or they were not as good as middle of the pack, and then they finish the last 15 games really strong, they probably have a good chance in the first round. But not necessarily more than that. But, I mean, you can suck as bad as you want in the first half. And if you are one of the top 10 teams in the second half, you're probably going to make the playoffs. A uh, case in point, the Preds, who were out of a playoff spot on more than one occasion during the course of the season until they finally got into that wild card area and stayed there the entire time for the last, I'd say, what, about 20-ish games? But for the yeah. last 15 or so, uh, more than 15, because they went on that 18-game run, and that was several games ago that that ended. So you could go back about 25 games to see what kind of team they've been. But if you look at the last 15, and you look at the record that they've had in the last 15, I they must have won at least 10, meaning they've won, you know, more than double what they've lost, like two thirds of their games. And yeah, I don't, I don't have the stats. For that this, that to me says that's a team that is, uh, and I've said this to you before. I'm going to say it again. I honestly believe the road to the Stanley Cup is probably going to go through the Predators. And regardless of that, I mean, look who you're playing. Uh, in or if they beat, if Canucks beat the Preds, there's, the Canucks have a chance to actually win. They might get confidence of that. Because I honestly think if the Canucks win that series, it's going to be at least six, if not seven. I think the yeah. Preds, if they win, will do it in five or six. I know that sounds weird to you, but I just think Soros is going to stand on his head and your top three goal scorers are going to show why they're the top three goal scorers and why one of them is one of the best in the league. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and experience matters in the playoffs because yeah, like you know as well as i do there's hockey and there's playoff hockey it's yeah. two totally different seasons exactly <laughs> it's two to- it's like it might as well be two different leagues and, yeah you know it's crazy and you do have experienced uh playoff guys on your team uh, yeah so i was there. looking at um yeah. uc saros versus demko and they were talking about so uc has 10 starts in the postseason, 17 total appearances. Demko has three and four, respectively. Okay. Um, Nashville's as a whole, the lineup has 818 playoff game experience versus wow. 482 in the Canucks. And when you figure that Shin and McDonough have both won two Stanley Cups. Wait, Ryan Shins O'Reilly. Won, Shins won two Stanley Cups. How did I not know that? Yeah, and Ryan O'Reilly's won a Stanley Cup. Yes. Um, we have right. some Why really seasoned Shin veterans. Do? <laughs> That's odd. He's bounced around, which is weird. He's one of those yeah. guys you don't know why people trade him because he's never yeah. actually been a problem. Some of some teams have looked at him and go, well, he's not really quite a fit. How? He He wants the puck more than most guys on the ice most of the time. And the only time he doesn't want it more than anyone else, he wants it as bad as anyone else. That's what yeah. I noticed everywhere I've seen him play. That was like And he's that tough. Was like, he is tough to play against. And do you know what he reminds me of? He might reminds me of of a weaker uh smaller uh Dion Phaneuf. <laughs> I'm not familiar with him, so I don't know. Whoa. What? I, I'm not. I'm sorry. I that. wasn't. I didn't. I didn't quite hear. You're not familiar yeah. with Dan Phaneuf. I, I am not familiar. Played for, for the Calgary Flames, and he was a terror. You played against him, and he would launch you from one end of the ice to the other when he hit you. And he could score and get and lots of his points and stuff. And then he was traded to Toronto at a time when the Jets didn't exist. So, having moved to Toronto at the time. Uh, I mean, naturally was watching uh, Leaf games. And I didn't hate the Leafs, so it was easier for me to become a Leafs fan. Um, yeah. And so when they got the Infinite, I was like, yeah. 
yeah. And he was knocking people all over the place. But there was always a lot of this and that. And Oh, if we're going to trade anybody, it should be for enough. I'm like, why? Why? Well, the, with the exception of the obvious, okay, with <laughs> Roman Yossi, McDonough, we have yeah. a pretty good decor. Uh, Alexander Carrier, he's been stellar this year. He was stellar last year. Um, Jeremy Lazon, he came up from Milwaukee last year, played great. They kept him on the roster, thank God. The dude has set the NHL record for hits of 383 hits. Man, he's see, been a this, monster. This is the kind of thing I talk about. I spent pretty much the entire season, not pretty much the entire season, telling you from before it started that your team was better than you think, that they were going to make the playoffs. And I remember saying to you before it even started, it doesn't matter whether they finish first or, or with the last wild card spot. They're probably going to be a formidable team come playoff time. And, and you're finally starting to see that just now. And it's about time. Meanwhile, I admit I've had a little bit of my, you know, let's talk about the Jets now. And they're, you know, with the, I want to see the Yeah, let me just yet, say one thing. Let me just say one thing about before you start. Yeah, go ahead. I told you so. I've been telling you for a long time the Jets are not out of this. So there you go. I'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> just if I could back. put a gif up here of the I told you so I told you so I would put a, it a little backstory <laughs> both of our teams were so freaking terrible at one point and when I say terrible the Jets were actually pretty much up the list but they weren't winning but they had played so well in the first half that they were able to actually lose <laughs> more games than they won for a stretch and still have be fighting for fifth or third place for a good chunk of the season before they finally went on that six-game losing streak, which was stupid and embarrassing. By the way, the Jets have only lost three games or more three times this season, as far as I know. They had a three-game losing streak early in the, in, in the uh, in the season when they were actually at the good. I think it was the beginning of the year, actually. Uh, they had a, a five-game losing streak just a little while after they started playing really... Or no, sorry. After, they, after the first half of the season ended, they were in the second half. And they they uh, they went on a five game losing streak, and then they just turned around and won five in a row right away again. Then they kind of like they'd win two, lose one, win three, lose one, uh, and they didn't lose two in a row for a long time. And when they yeah, did, your lose team has two, been way more consistent three. than the Predators have. Been, they were so. for a while, and then they and then they went on and then they went on that damn six game losing streak, just as it was looking like they were going to challenge for first place again. And after that six game losing streak, they won a couple, lost one. Won a couple, lost one again, and then they they're now at seven straight. And I'm hoping that that doesn't. Well, it's, oh, it's end of first one one, so <laughs> we're still good for now. <laughs> but nonetheless, they're at seven straight right now, and they could end up finishing the season with eight game winning streak, which would be twice with an eight game winning streak. And the eight game winning streak is a Winnipeg Jets record for at least for Jets 2.0. I don't really remember yeah. uh, the original Jets if they if they, if they've ever done nine. I don't think so. I think seven or eight was all they ever did in a row. And they had a couple of really good seasons where they finished third or fourth in the league, um, but or at least one, anyways. But um, the 2017 2018 Jets were uh, at least points wise uh, definitely the best team the Jets have ever had. Well, actually, they just plain were uh, of any era. And this year, they're probably even better. The only thing that would really make them better would be if Bufflin came out of retirement. <laughs> yeah. But that's He's said, missed. He's missed. Let's, I, I, let's have a little it. bit of a chat about the Avalanche and their um, the Jets' Achilles heel could possibly be um, some nobody named McKinnon. <laughs> you know, only, only Only probably the best player in the world right now. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. McDavid. I'm sorry, Mr. Dreisaitl, and I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, what's his name from Toronto? <laughs> yeah, it's Mr. The guy with nine thousand goals. goals, whatever. But Nathan McKinnon has uh, what does he have? Sixty goals or something like that? Or yeah, he's up there. He's he's <laughs> definitely a, he's definitely an elite player for sure. I, uh, I don't know he if is. he's the best well, he, at he, this point, but that's I, honestly as, as an overall player right now, just because he's done it. again. It's kind of like. Um, uh, like your boy there, uh, why am I forgetting? I want to say Roman Yossi, but not him. Uh, your your goal scorer. <laughs> oh, Philip uh, Forsberg? Yeah, yeah, Forsberg. He, he, he's kind of done it quietly. Like, people have noticed him. They talked about him a lot more than For Forsberg. Um, but a lot of that is because the Avs either have been fighting for first place 
or at least fighting for a better spot for a good chunk of the season. At one point, they were number one or number two for a while. Uh, and like a lot of the teams, including Boston, they kind of fell down a little bit after having a nice run. Jets had a couple of weeks at number one, and they fell. Um, New York Rangers are the only team that didn't fall out of number one, but that's only because they only went into it two weeks ago. So all they had to do is win a few more and stay there. Um, so they, right now, the New York Rangers are the best team in the league. But do I think are they're they, the best team in the league? Are they going to be the president's trophy? Oh, no. They, yeah, no. They, they just locked that up like three games ago. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that. So that means they're going well, to get swept. Three games that means they're going to get swept in the playoffs. Yeah, probably. <laughs> if, if history tells it. But anyways, about the abs. Okay, they're goaltending. To be honest with you, I, I need to look up the goaltenders' names. Mm. I actually don't remember them. And this is not, an, not, not, I'm not trying to be insulting, but they just, uh, if you're not an abs fan or a really diehard stats fan, you may not even know who they are in comparison to some other team's goaltending. Um, they're not bad goaltenders by any stretch of the imagination. They can play number one or number two on a lot of teams, but the problem is they're not number one on Stanley Cup winning teams, in my opinion. I don't think so. I don't think anybody believes that right now except maybe them. Um, God, I hope they're not watching this because if they ever run into me on the street, I'm a dead man. But <laughs> but, but it's... <laughs> But the truth of the matter is they're up against not only Connor Hellebuck, but also Laurent Bressois, who, despite the fact that he's only played 22 games and cannot get his name on a Jennings if the Jets score three goals or less. And no, they don't have to score two or less, three or less, and they can at least share it with, with the Panthers. But um, I think that sucks, by the way. They should drop that down to, I don't know, 20. 15 might yeah. be a little too low because it's easy to have really good stats. But at 20, once you hit 20 games... If your stats are still up there, you don't deserve a, a you know a, the single goalie trophy, but but the team one, hell yeah, twenty games. Why does that not count? They 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 should change it, and they should change it retroactively, in my yeah. opinion, to so to include any goalie who's ever played, so that they man they're not gonna put their name on the trophy, you know, thirty years later, but but acknowledge right. them, right? There's there's been a lot of goaltenders who didn't play enough to get their name on there, but the, the 20 games that they did play, or 22, should be worth it. And Laurent Bressois' numbers are technically better than Hellebuck's. Uh, in the same amount of games played, would they be as good? Maybe, maybe not. He has, I believe, two shutouts in his last three games. So he's playing tonight, as far as I know. Um, yeah, two shutouts in the last three games. He... Uh, he had a shutout a few years back when he played with the Jets. Had a second shutout, I believe, when he played with whatever team he was traded to. Uh, and then he came back to the Jets uh, last year, and then he got a shutout this year. So it was only his third ever shutout or second. Maybe he didn't get with the other team. Um, but then all of a sudden he got another one. And then the next game he played, a few days later he got another one again. And I'm like, wait a minute now. <laughs> so his goals against average is better than, than Hellebuck's. Uh, as it stands, I mean, in the numbers, that is. Uh, and his, his uh, save percentage also uh, is is better. Um, would it be better if he played 42 games? Probably not. But would he be competitive with him? I 100% believe that. I think the Jets have the two best goaltenders in the league, uh, certainly the best goaltending tandem in the league. So the big ace in the hole for the Jets against anybody is their goaltending. But... I'm hearing other people say that they, their weak spot is their defense. How do you figure? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, mean, don't, I don't know. Morrissey, yeah, Morrissey alone is as good as any defenseman in the league. And why he's not being nominated for a Norris. I, I, there's the other numbers involved in why they dominate them, and I guess. Um, but in my opinion, he deserves a Norris trophy this year for sure. Um, but basically... All of their other defensemen, Dylan DeMello, by the way, is is uh, amongst the league leaders. What was it again in that stat that he had? I'm sorry, I should have had this ready for, but I, I for some reason I wasn't thinking. Uh, I think you're from, are, are you, didn't Dylan DeMello used to play for the Predators? Um, the name sounds familiar, but I, I think he did, it was else. short-lived for something, but I, it, yeah, I don't think so. 
Uh, I don't know. For some reason, I was thinking he played for them. Maybe it's a different team I'm thinking what's, of. What's, what's Brassois? Is the numbers? What's his stats numbers? Oh, okay. I'd have to look that up. Uh, oh, separately. I thought you had it there. So I was uh, kind of no, curious no, about I, Lincoln. I'm literally looking at the, at the full league right now um, because I wanted to see. Because Lincoln has uh, been pretty solid. I don't know. Again, I, I, was, I was wanting to compare the numbers. He he really kind of came on strong. Of course, Lincoln was a starting goalie for the um, – Chicago Blackhawks for a long time when they were good, right. you know. So he's a good goalie. And, yes, he is. Yeah, uh, um, his 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 numbers are um, for this this regular season two eighty two and nine oh eight. Well, see, the thing is, is that um, the the um, twenty four games played, the goals against average can be a little deceiving with goaltenders, especially if they played more games. Less games are totally deceiving. Like Anthony Stolarz is the league leader in goals against average <laughs> at 2.03. How many games has he played? I mean, because, like, he, he, there's nobody... 2.03? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. Um, then you got Sergei Bobrovsky, 2.37, which is a normal for him. But he's not even being considered for, for, for the... I uh, forgot what you call the trophy. <laughs> Um, Vezina, uh, Hellebuck is oh, right, supposedly yeah, yeah. the front runner, who's two point three nine, which is excellent. But uh, right. here's the thing: Hellebuck's played considerably more than those other goaltenders, considerably more. So the, his numbers make way more sense. Thatcher Demko, I'm not sure how many he's played, but he's at two point four four, which is highly respectable. Right? It's, that's not bad numbers at all. Skinner is at two point five seven. Cam Talbot two point four seven. But uh, what was it? Uh, there was another stat in here for some reason that is not showing up. It was here yesterday. <laughs> and now it's not showing up. It was, oh, okay, hang on a second. I got to hit the other button. Was it save? No, not save percentage. Oh, yeah, Anthony Stars is 9.25 save percentage, too. He's, Hellebuck is second to this guy. <laughs> yeah, and see, that's, like, see, the same thing with Saros and Lincoln in, that you're talking about with Brassois and... Hello, book. Um, technically, Lincoln's numbers are a little better than Saros's. Saros um, for the season is at um, two eighty six and nine oh six, but you know Saros has played sixty four games versus twenty four games. <laughs> so <laughs> when you think about that stat, obviously Saros' numbers are better. Now Saros has had. He hasn't had his best year. He hasn't had definitely a worst year. I mean, he's got good numbers, but no, he's definitely not um, had his best year. But, but he's he's not had his best year. So, but you know what? He's also been let down a few times. Let's be realistic. Oh yeah, My he's been he's been hung out to dry more times than your mama's laundry. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I have no idea why the heck this is coming up right now. But Michael Hutchinson, by the way, who's actually definitely an NHL caliber goaltender, has played one game this season. So somebody's not giving him a chance. He needs to be traded somewhere else. Uh, no offense. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this because I want anybody to be injured, but I hope that's due to injury and not just because I don't believe in him. The guy's actually, he was actually slated to be Winnipeg's number one, but he got injured. Uh, sorry, he, he took over for a backup who was injured, and then the number one guy got, got injured, and he had to take over for a while, and that's when they called up Hellebuck, who they thought needed another year. Hutchinson got injured a few games later, and Hellebuck has been the number one goalie ever since. That's how good Hellebuck yeah. is. Several years of that. But nonetheless, Michael Hutchinson is definitely way better than a one game a year goaltender. That's <laughs> yeah. Something's something's up with that. I'm gonna look that up some other time. But I can't I can't remember that stat that I was looking for. But um you were asking about one. Um about No, I was it? just curious what Bassois's um stats were. I was just kind of comparing to Oh, the for some reason. Like, oh, I know why. I didn't look directly at the at the Winnipeg Jets in the NHL. Uh, if I had done that, that's probably where I would have found it. Uh, I went to the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, not schedule. Look at that. Here we go. I got it right here on ESPN. Oh, I'm glad you got he's it. Played, I just he's played 20, it. He's played 22 games. And he is... Wow. 2.0 and 928. Yeah. For 22 games, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's that's it's, it's beyond good. It's for the amount of games he's played. I thought I was like, he, his numbers really are actually better. Everyone else that 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 is in that range 
has either played more like Hellebuck and maybe one other guy, uh, or they've played only t- 15 or 12 or 10 or 5 or something. So yeah, Hellebuck's, might Hellebuck's just... played uh, 60 games. Who? Hellebuck. Yeah. He, he's wow, played 60 lot. games, and it's he's 239, 921. So, I mean, he's... Yeah. yeah. And, he, yeah. and he was also 917 at one point. As a matter of fact, actually, at the end of the first half of the season... Hellebuck's numbers, I think it was nine nine eleven, uh, save percentage, and he went from that to nine twenty one. So that's a hell of an improvement. Um, you know, well, it's a small number, and just, that small number is a goal a game difference. That's huge over the course of the entire season. Oh yeah, for so, sure. Um, a goal and a half, actually, I think something like that. Uh, and, and for some reason, I can't actually find. Oh, there no, that's that's a Wikipedia page. It used to be you would just hit the search button you'd, for the team. It would go to their NHL version of the page. You know, Winnipeg yeah. Jets NHL page or the Calgary Nine Flames more. NHL page. For some reason, that's not happening to me. And I don't know why. So the Canucks, anyways, as I was saying. No, not Canucks. I keep saying that. Uh, the uh, Avalanche, pardon me. Um, they're an amazing team. They have a, a, an incredible amount of offense. It's not just Nathan McKinnon. To be sure, they have good offense. They're goaltending or good defense. Their goaltending is, eh, but it's it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. And they they've been known to stifle a team here and there. But the problem is, is I don't honestly believe that they can handle the grit, intestinal fortitude, <laughs> and, and, and the sheer volume of energy that the Jets are capable of bringing. Also, and this is a lot to do with coaching, obviously. Uh, the Jets can and will change their style of play from play to play at the drop of a hat. In mid-flight, I've seen the Jets actually change both their offense and defensive structures in the middle of a play. And you just don't see that with other teams. So that's why they were able to adapt. That's why when, when you see them, some games are like, oh, they're down one nothing in the first period. and uh, They played like crap. They got three shots on goal. And they come out in the second, they get 15 shots and score three goals. You know, what the hell happened? Did you know that Avalanche <laughs> are running with three goalies on roster? Who? Avalanche. Yeah, three goalies on the roster? Lots of teams have that. Well, in the past, lots of teams did. I um, didn't know they had three. They had that Gorgiev, um, a, a Noonan, and I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name. Fran, is it Francois? I, F-R-A-N-C-O-U-Z. If it's French, it's Francois. What? F-R-A-N-C-O-U-Z. Pavel. U-Z. I don't uh, know. Francus? I don't know. Francus, I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, Francus. Is yeah. He Itali- an Italian goaltender. But his cool. numbers, he's um, played, his numbers are abysmal. He's at 302 and 897. I want him in goal. Oh, my God. That sounds <laughs> I want like him Grant, in that. <laughs> that sounds like Grant Fuhr numbers. That's not disrespecting Grant Fuhr. Those numbers were normal back then when the crappiest team in the NHL would score 300 goals. Now the best team scores three hundred and twenty-five. Oh, sorry, my my <laughs> mistake. Let me let me change that. I was clicking right. the wrong person. That was Gorgiev's numbers. Ooh, that's their number one guy. Yeah, that's their number one guy. Oh, maybe not no. after this year. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why they can't get another goaltender. Why they're afraid to trade somebody out or something. Um, Trade well, the other two pick. goalies have like 13 and... They got an excellent team overall. 16 they games, to, respectively. They need to trade a few draft picks. Like, trade a couple of first-rounders. Do whatever you have to do. Um, and, 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 and pick up, um, pick up uh, um, one really solid two-way defenseman. You know, it's what I said. I said two-way defenseman because I believe they need that. Um, and one solid goaltender, and then just work your secondary goaltender right out of the system from from uh, from junior or college, whatever, and you know train them through the system. Uh, by by the second year around, you might have this guy actually working well. That's how the Jets have done it. That's how they got Hellebuck. Uh, that's how they got uh, uh, Hutchinson when he was supposed to be that guy, um, and that's how they've got a lot of their players. Uh, except yeah. for they obviously inevitably ended up needing to supplement a number of trades. And they're, now they've done that this year. And speaking of which, a good way to segue into that. Right? The Jets, let me look at their little roster here. 
so we can actually talk about how, how this is going. Yeah, this is uh, actually I, I'm I'm stoked at how this works out. Uh, speaking of which, Brassois has faced nine shots on goal and allowed one. Um, that's not necessarily a good thing. <laughs> but that said, well, no, they when, are against when, the Canucks. When, you, when we played the Jets, remember, you guys scored three on five shots. So Yeah, well, yeah but that's the Jets, right? Oh, you didn't have Brassois in net. Anyways, the bottom line is usually when that happens, he usually shuts the door. But they are playing a team that has... And like, remember, the, the, the Canucks were the number one scoring team for three quarters of the season before they stopped scoring as much as they did. They yeah, have well, the Pedersen's power. a sniper, oh, I'm man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think I need to hold this up for a second. Can you see that? Is it visible? Uh, two to one? Did you score? Yeah, baby. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just had to, I had to do that. Cole Perfetti. He's still considered a prospect. He's not even a regular player yet, which is mind-boggling because the guy is so unbelievably talented. He reminds me of a cross between Ehlers and, and Connor, Kyle Connor. Uh, Ehlers is, by the way, not playing tonight. A bunch of guys aren't playing. Um, yeah. The Jets the, the have been doing the same thing, roster I maintenance. Think, you know what? I think that's a huge mistake um, because it's not like they're, oh, they locked up their first place or their second place or whatever. They're vying to make sure that they can get more time in that first round at home. And I would have just put every single number one body out there. But they have a they have 100% health right now. Every single player is back from whatever injuries or illnesses. They're all 100%. And honestly, the Jets have, the Jets have so much depth that... Let's see, uh, um, Perfetti and Velarde. So one one guy they traded to get, and one guy that they brought up from the system uh, from draft. And <laughs> that's depth, baby. <laughs> uh, it's fantastic. Uh, so in my opinion, I think the Jets should beat the Avalanche in, in, in the series. And I honestly do believe that they could do it in five uh, and that they should do it within six. If it goes seven games, the Jets don't stand a chance in the second round. I'm sorry. I, they're a great team. They have great goaltending. But they just haven't proved to me that they can go that many games that fast and not run out of steam. I hope I'm wrong. But if they go seven and they go against a team that won in five, they're not going to be able to do it. Unless they go against it. They, they, there's a lot of experience on that team. And you know There is. They're they 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 they're not they're not it's like I said, they're an excellent hockey team. They're not bad. These guys literally fought uh to the last game over over who is gonna get that spot. Right? And the Jets yeah. won. But of course if you look back at the at the games that the Jets played against the Avalanche, they played them three times, twice in, in Colorado. They destroyed them every one, every one. Not, none of these were two one games. I think the lowest scoring game was, I think was four two. Um, the other ones were like five something or six something, uh, you know. And then the seven nothing. <laughs> well, the Preds definitely have a nice long break, which hasn't boded well for them in the past. And I feel like a lot of times these hockey players they get into a, their rhythm, they get into a groove, and they just they play their best when they just keep playing. And then when you take this break, it's kind of like, you know how like when you're working really hard and you you you, you go to lunch and you're like, oh man, you're just all comfortable and you have your lunch and you get up and then you just have like that motivation just isn't there anymore. Or yeah, right. you're like your bones are creaking or what. <laughs> I just feel like when they take too long of a break, it's just not going to go well. But, you know, obviously we don't have any control over the playoffs because – our first playoff of game is um, Sunday, and then we play again Tuesday, and then they play in Nashville Friday and Sunday of next weekend. So, this, because of how the schedule is, because of like there's stuff going on at Rogers Arena, there's stuff going on at Bridgestone, uh, just the sheer distance between the two teams. I mean, you know, it's a long well, travel yeah. to well, play. Well, I listen. I so, I gotta ask you, who are you rooting for tonight in the game? Of your team? Yeah. Well, of course I want the Jets to win. Wait, now, is it because you prefer the Jets to win or because you want the Jets to beat the snot out of the Canucks? Well, it's... <laughs> so that, that they're tired and beat up. <laughs> both. 
Yeah. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's, we have to get off talking about okay. our own teams now because we don't have a lot of time left. So let's let's talk about what we think about other teams we're going to be able to do. Edmonton didn't start out well. Everyone was like, oh my God, doesn't matter what they do. They didn't. They got the best player in the world, blah, 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 blah. They can't do anything. Well, they proved that wrong when they won 16 or whatever it was, consecutive games. Yeah. And in the Crazy. second half of the season, they were, ironically enough, not the best team in the league. They were like the second best. The best team in the league in the, in, in the second half, for a good chunk of the second half, regardless of whether you want to believe it or not, was actually the Predators, if you look at the numbers. So, <laughs> but that's their, their said, weakest point has been goaltending. They have not had strong goaltending. What, the, uh, the, the, the Oilers? Oilers, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, well, it, that's true. It's very true. But even with that, I think the Oilers are an incredibly strong team. Oh, yeah. In the first round. In the second round, regardless of who they're playing, I'm not saying they couldn't go to, to, to the conference final, but I, I, they, they will have a hard time with whoever makes it to the, to the second round. Um, if they make it past the first round, they're going to have a hell of a time in round two. Uh, and that's, I really believe that. I don't think there's a lot to talk about with the other teams in the Western Conference other than what we did. Avalanche, if they beat the Jets, I wouldn't put it past them to be able to go all the way. Although, if they played against, um, help me out here, Dallas, is it Dallas? Um, yeah. They would probably lose. I, I would pick Dallas to win that. Uh, right now, I, I, I don't know if I'd pick Dallas over anybody. But I, I think realistically, the numbers probably say that they're the best team, uh, not just yeah. because they are, but but uh, just because they're so stingy that there's a good chance that that uh, they, they could. But here's the biggest thing: Dallas scores more than every other team, other than the Avalanche in the Western Conference at this point. Certainly for the last twenty games, yeah, uh, they score more than the Predators do. So if they played the Predators, they their the defenses are comparable the goaltending is comparable but they score way more same thing with the jets jets better goaltending way better defense but nowhere near as good in the goal scoring department so that kind of weighs itself out um against edmonton they're way better defensively and equally as good on offense so yes. where does that go again if the oilers had to play them in the first round I could see the Oilers actually pulling it off against Dallas. In the second round, no chance. Yeah. Lucky for them, they won't play them in the second round. But um, yeah, I, I, it's moving over. right. It's I, I now yeah. when you look at the um, the Eastern Conference. Yeah, I was going to go there too. Um, you know the the normal. Let's see. I don't even know who's in the top there. Let me pull that up because. I need. I need this. What Rangers? Well, again, the Rangers are going to get swept in the first round because well, they were the that, That's that's an omen sort of prediction. <laughs> it's that's like uh, that's uh, like saying look. Toronto plays Boston, Toronto automatically loses <laughs> in Game Seven after after giving up a three goal lead with two minutes to go. But <laughs> but, look, but look at history. History speaks it. When we won the Presidents Trophy, we were destroyed. Well, you, but, but now hang on a minute. In all fairness, you guys fought tooth and nail. You're not you guys, but your team fought tooth and nail to get into the playoffs at all, and you barely made it in. First half sucked. Second half, you're like, oh my god, we're gonna, we can do it, we can do it. You're racing for the finish line. You slam your hand over that line and go, we got in. And then you start running through teams, going, hey man, look how good we are. And then you get to the final and go like. Oh, so here's yeah, I who I we, think. The, I guess I guess we were good enough to race against Usain Bolt, but we're really not going to beat him. That's kind of how that must have felt like. But the difference there is is that in 2017, 2018, you really did have in the regular season the best team. And in all honesty, I don't know that the Jets were actually better than the Preds that year. I think that the Jets just. People say, oh, they wanted it more. The Preds wanted it too. I just think that there was a minor amount of luck here and there. A puck went in that maybe wouldn't have gone in the day before. You know? Uh, you okay, guys so here's, a, here's my you guys prediction. You guys hit a post in one game that maybe the game, the next game wouldn't have hit the post, would have went in instead. So there's a minor amount of luck in there. They went seven games, and, and the Jets did win by a pretty good score in that seventh game, but... 
I think by then the Jets just had the confidence, and your your guys were starting to lose at that point at the conference. Okay, so we're talking about other teams now. Yes, we are, and we're also not talking about 2018. <laughs> so please continue. So my <laughs> here's my call for the Eastern Conference. I think I don't think the Rangers are going to make it past first round. I don't think they're going to get swept. I just don't. You know, I, I think they're going to end up making it because I think they're playing teams that are much stronger. Now, well, let me, let me take. No, sorry, let me let me back up. They'll make it through the first round. They won't make it through the second round. Who the Preds? No, the Rangers. Oh, because the, the Rangers are playing the Capitals. Yeah. The Capitals have been terrible this year. Okay? Yeah, I, they I believe barely right. squeaked in that last wild card spot. Right. Carolina Hurricanes are number two, and so I guess they're probably going to pay play. Well, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be the Hurricanes or Boston. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but Boston the Florida Panthers, second. Florida Panthers, didn't, man, didn't everyone Boston counts Florida second? Panthers out. Panthers are a tough team, man. They're they're number one in the Atlantic. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying to be the best defensive team. But if the Jets don't allow any more goals in this game. They finished second. <laughs> I had to do that little sinister laugh. Anyways, um, Panthers, no, I would never count, count them out. I would give them as good a chance as anyone. Boston, I don't believe he's going to do it. Everybody so we'll talked about how great Boston was, but how many of their points came from losing in overtime? If you've got the stats in front of you, that's a shocker. They lost the fewest amount of regulation games this season. And it's been like that since the first game of the season. But every every other team was like basically fighting to catch up with them and maybe pass yeah. them even. If the Jets win tonight, they pass Boston too. That's why they finished fourth, like I'm saying. And Boston. Yeah, is they have a combined the league, um, so. 20 games lost. Yeah, exactly. How oh, it Combined? What do you mean combined? Between home and away. Sorry. Oh, no, no. Yeah, but how many? Total. How many? How many overtime losses? Overtime. Slash, oh, overtime. Shoot. Sorry, um, they are uh, a 15. lot. Yeah, fifteen. Fifteen games that, in all reality, right? I don't know how many of those are shootouts. You take fifteen they, points away, and they're not even. They're not. Well, yeah, even exactly. Games. There was a time when 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 overtime didn't get you points. I mean, it was a long time ago. Yeah. It was yeah. before my time, actually, but it, there was a time when, when that didn't get you any points. And and that would have had Boston not even be in the playoffs, if you look at the numbers. Yeah, and you, They see, wouldn't have even look, been in it. You've got the right. New York Islanders third in the Metropolitan with 94 points. They're going to get yeah. destroyed. They the are Islanders. not that good. They they snuck into that they're spot because they are not, not that as, good. They're not as bad as you might think. No, they're, I've they're, watched them play, and we've played them. So, I mean, I know how they play. And they're not terrible, but they're not. No, they're I'm not sorry. Right. They're not going to be able to. Well, who are they withstand. playing against? Who are they playing against? I don't know what the schedule is on the Eastern Conference. And so there's, so um, there's, still, there's still a couple of teams that have to get their spots? No, all the spots are locked in, it looks like. But I don't. Let's see, so we have um, it goes well, on based on top in the eastern, not in the division. Yeah, no, number one plays the last number right, uh, uh, wild card, number two plays the first wild card, and then everyone else is number in the, each division, number two against number three. Okay, so number one and two are Islanders Hurricanes because it's 114 points, 111 points. And then the so Florida Panthers, one hundred and ten. Canes win that one. Canes hands down, probably four against straight, Tampa, four to one. Yeah, what's that? Against Tampa, you're talking about. Wait, against Tampa. Okay, you, I'm sorry. You just said Canes and Islanders. I, I'm confused. No, no, no. I, I was going down like who's got the points. So look at the, the wild card spot is Tampa and Washington. Right. So we already know that they're the ones who are going to play the Rangers and and whoever second is. Second would be Hurricanes. Hurricanes finished second in the conference. They have 111 points. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So, all right. There, you, there. You have that. No. So that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, so I think the Canes can easily beat Tampa. Eastern Division. In each of the two Eastern Division con- or uh, divisions. Eastern divisions. Who finished second and third in each division? Uh, so, Metropolitan is Canes Islanders. And then Atlantic is Bruins Leafs. Okay, uh, Bruins. Everyone's going to. So say I guess the Leafs. Islanders would play the Bruins. Every, everyone's going to say the Panthers. Bruins. No, no. 
Did you hear what I said? Second place and third place in each division play each other in round one. So Bruins and Leafs are second and third in their division. And neither one of them is first in, in the conference. Then they will play each other. Same with Canes. And, you know, let me look this up. I just yeah. afraid to take this off because I was looking at that, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna open up a new a new tab and go NHL standings again. Open this up. I beg your pardon. Uh, yeah, we're running well, we're running down to the last couple of minutes here, so we're gonna have to yeah. this one up. Yeah, we'll have to deal with this uh standings thing. Um Maybe next episode when we kind of get into it after after they because by the time we do our next uh, next week's podcast okay. we'll have already played the first two games. Yeah, yeah. So okay, well, let me let me just real, real quick here. So <clears throat> we already know, uh, yeah, New York and Carolina. Okay, okay uh, the Hurricanes, yeah, uh, 111. But it, but here's the thing: it's the first place of each division that gets one and two, right? So Florida and New York. Will be the teams that will play the wild the two wild card teams. Okay, so Boston, that's what I Boston, thought. That's Boston, what I thought. Yeah. You said that. Boston, you said that well, in yeah, the whole. Yeah, but I totally forgot okay. that. I forgot that 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 Carolina and the Rangers were in the same. I was thinking they were the same as Florida. I don't know why. So Boston will play Toronto, and Carolina will play the Islanders. So um, this is an easy pick. Anyone who picks it differently <coughs> is nuts. Carolina is going to destroy New York Islanders. I'm sorry, five, yeah. maybe even four straight. That's my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree totally. <laughs> Sorry, Boston and Toronto is a totally different story. Most people will say, oh, Boston's going to destroy them because they always do. But Toronto, just on goals alone, <laughs> they might take it. Next podcast, too, we're going to talk about how I've seen some rumors going around where they might restructure the divisions and conferences next year but that's for another episode we can talk about that next one so i am robert from nashville tennessee and saying adios until next time lionel yep <laughs> so, he's, he's he's got something stuck in his throat and he's having <laughs> coughing anyways i'm robert on behalf of lionel in canada we'll see you next episode have a good one.